Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive, thankfully, the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servant girls. She calls from the highest places in the town, you that are simple, turn in here. To those without sense, she says, come, eat of my bread, and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live, and walk in the way of insight. The word of the Lord.
A reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? 
So Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like the bread which your ancestors ate and died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Eat my flesh and drink my blood. What a terrifying statement. Please be seated. Now that I'm awake, had a hard morning, but I am going to have some fun with you. I'm going to do a little history for you, and then I'm going to do an impactful ending to explain this complete beautiful phrase that will turn from the terrifying to that of the reassurance of the guidance of that of eternal life. But I must say, my days of storytelling are over. So I have to borrow a piece from last week's sermon that was done exquisitely. Father Andrew said, a story about his grandmother and his mother. Where will I go? I always preach on my grandmother and mother. One story blew my 87 stories right out the window. But I remember one thing so deeply. He ended with the love of God within a simple grilled cheese sandwich. Oh my God, I jumped up. And I ran, it was 11.30, I reviewed the mass that late at night, and I tried making a grilled cheese sandwich. But just thinking about him just eating and lush, just, oh, dripping with love. Mine was dry and overdone, and I swear I'll never make another grilled cheese again. But the key to it was, It was a piece of bread which was made with love, and that love completely followed us all to to eternal life. But the worst part was that they clapped for him. Oh my God, my gig is up. (laughs) Don't ever clap again. Sorry, Andrew. He's hiding already. Oh my God, I'm going to get thrown out, I could tell. But I have a story, but it's going to be very towards the end. Okay. Let's take this, this, I say, beautiful passage. Even though the way it sounds right now, it will be sounding differently for the rest of your life. In the ancient society, <clears throat> this practice of eating flesh and drinking blood was common knowledge. It happened every day. They would take their sacrifice of the animal, 
bring it to their temple and slaughter the animal, but also only take a piece of it and burn it so that the God that they were praying to woke up and heard their prayer. They would take the rest to the priest and then he would give it out so that they would have a grand feast that day of the animal that was sacrificed because they believed that in that animal was the God that they prayed to and they were once again fused into that God and had a new purpose in life. It will sound familiar, believe me. Let's move on a little bit to that of the Jewish faith. They do much the same, except in the Orthodox and that of the Hasidic Jewish people, they drain the blood completely out of the animal first, and then they sacrifice that animal. The blood in both cases was never consumed because they knew that in the, life, the blood there was life. And they thought that if they would spill the life would be the destruction of the person that it came from. And that's why so many times the Jewish person will refuse surgery because if they drop any portion of the blood, it would be like dying for them. So they moved away from that. In that moment of their sacrifice, they realized that they too wanted to be united with that of Yahweh himself and sacrifice what they have, the best of what they had, so that they may go home also and have a feast that day. Let's move on. Jesus Christ is saying, the same terminology as in ancient history, as in Jewish history, and now in the new culture. But Jesus never acted out of his culture or of his own faith. He used those words to give new expression to that of what was being said. It was now, <clears throat> yes, the gift of life. The body was that of Christ. His blood was spilled, the blood of life. The bread of life and the blood of salvation. Is this sounding familiar? That day came that he had to explain a new terminology for them. Using those words that people would understand, it was like, okay, we know that, but what's happening? He would spill his own blood for us and for our salvation. The bread of life that she was, he baked that bread into his own life. I have a recipe for bread, and it comes that with, with the zesting of life as well. And his bread was alive and challenging as well. He takes that bread, breaks it, blesses it, and gives it to his disciples of saying, what is he talking about? We've done this for years, but what does he mean? His blood, his blood. He transforms that into the bread of life and uses the bread instead of the life of his self and uses the wine to show that in that wine is the blood of Christ that we believe and will be consecrated for us to, so that we too may have eternal life. But he goes on and asks us to follow in his footsteps. We come to this temple today to sacrifice, but there is more to sacrifice than just a piece of bread and a cup of wine. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, a very good um, writer, author, states in his book, The Course of Discipleship, that to be a disciple is to drop the blood of yourself, is to give up your blood. It is so expensive that no one could ever afford it but we do it in gratitude of that of the Jesus Christ. We must sacrifice ourselves as well. We come today to be sacrificed within our own supper. In a few moments, I'm going to invite you to the best Thanksgiving feast you've ever had. I know it's a couple of weeks off, 
quite a few, but I'm looking forward to it already. And we're going to feast on a new and exciting dinner. Watch carefully today as Father lifts up that host and breaks it, fractures it. That is the breaking of the humanity that needs to be healed by that of Jesus Christ, and then he puts it back together again and subdivides it for us. He lifted up that bread and said, Lord, take my community as I offer it to you, and I will be the sacrifice for them. Give them the bread of life. Let us be thankful. At a high mass, as we used to when I was, uh, when I was a child, and an altar boy, we used to use a lot of incense. But at that moment, we would incense the priest as well because the priest has taken the persona of Jesus Christ and is Christ in your midst at that moment. It is Christ, Jesus, that brings us this day. But I don't believe that John wrote this beautiful gospel to just stay on a book and to be read. The next part is, how do we accept that body and blood of Jesus Christ? As Dietrich Bonhoeffer would go and continue on and say, that we must get up and live this exciting piece of bread. It is alive, it is well, it is exciting, but yet sometimes it brings us to dropping our blood as well. But in faith, we know that no matter what happens, we too will have a share in this body and blood of Christ. An extreme example right now of, of how the blood of Christ is spilt and yet is consumed at that same time. I visited Croatia about 20 years ago now, but it's still like yesterday to me, into Bosnia where the killing was so bad. And it, I think it ranks up with that of Ukraine right now and so many other places that they're killing each other for nothing, for no reason. I think for no reason, that's my personal. And yet, the blood is spilled. We went to a church, I believe it was called St. Mary's, where 18 monks were slaughtered they brought them out and said, this piece of bread, spit on it. It was the Eucharist. Kill me instead, they said. Here's the crucifix, spit on it. Crucify me instead. One by one they were slaughtered, but one was left. One was left to tell the story of the blood that was sh that day so shattered and so spilt, they ate and drank the blood of Christ with their own blood and their own bodies. And that day brought them to martyrdom, which is in union with God. They became God as well because they went into God and they received God. And I know before they died, they called for the name of Jesus Christ. Now, their bodies have been turned on earth, I think they call it, and put inside the bones that are left into the temple itself, the church of St. Mary's. But you can still see the blood on the stones of the steps. And when you turn around, you can see this beautiful park, beautiful park, grass and trees. I said, why has nobody built condos on that yet? It was called the blood field. It is where they bury thousands of men and women who did not, would not give up their faith, and they bury them all together in one horrible grave, so much like a holocaust itself, and covered it over so nicely with grass to hide their embarrassment, to hide their embarrassment that they would, did not win over these people. They too ate and drank the blood of Christ and were martyred. I'm not looking for martyrdom right now. I, I'm not into that right yet. And I really felt at that moment, seeing this as a witness of that of my own reality, I must bake that bread into that of Jesus Christ. 
zesting it with that of love for each one of us. We too must go out now and live the Eucharist. Take it into your hands. Take it, eat. But the root word for eat in the Greek um, language is to gnaw on the bread, to take it and to just gnaw on it, to know, and I'm chewing it, I'm loving it. It is Christ. He said, take and eat, and I'm eating it. Take and drink, and I'm drinking it. Savor that moment. Do not just swallow the Eucharist and run away. Savor that. It's your strength for the weak. And give thanks to God. We are now to complete the work of Christ. We are his hands. You are his hand. You are his eyes. You are his feet, and you are his heart of the sacred, the hands to reach out and to embrace each one and to tell them the story of Christ and how they too can live forever, to take a new path in life and trod a new path where no one has gone to bring the word of God. Yes, it's called a missionary. Well, do it. Be a missionary. You are his heart of the sacred, to love as deeply as he has loved us. Most of all, we are his eyes to continue to see the creation that God meant to be and bring it about. That is the living Eucharist, to bring about creation and heal it. Heal that piece of bread that was broken and give it to one another that we know it is healed by that of the love of God and the deepness. No recipe could ever match that. No story could ever even come near that. But to have faith, faith, and then I can invite you to the best Thanksgiving dinner you've ever had. Right on our altar today, the best that will ever be. Come now with me and walk the new path to that altar and say, Lord, I eat your body and drink your blood in a new expression of the bread and wine that is placed into my hands. And I believe I too will become God in eternal life. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe, we believe in, in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate for the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. 
Amen. The prayers of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be be one. one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your Your name name may be glorified glorified by by all people. people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That That they they may may be faithful faithful ministers ministers of your word and word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there there may be justice and and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That that they they may may be delivered delivered from their their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. And on this day, Lord, we lift up to you our parish family and all our members. We pray especially for those on our prayer lists. Remembering today by name, Susan, Carol, Melissa, Beverly, and Nelda. We remember the faithful departed, especially Bob Long, and pray for strength and peace for his family. We pray for those with great joy who are celebrating birthdays today and this week. Phyllis Bailey, Oliver Ajay, and Ian Ouellette. We pray for those serving in the military and their families, remembering especially Dale, Alastair, and Laz. We pray for our companions in Christ around the world, especially our friends at Andrew Nouvery Parish in Madagascar, and our friends at Bon Samaritan Church and School in Bondo, Haiti. And I invite your additional prayers and thanksgiving. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and what we have asked faithfully, grant to us effectually, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace to all and welcome. A warm and 
loving welcome to all. A special welcome to any visitors or newcomers we have with us today. We're delighted you're here. We welcome you warmly into our presence and invite you to stop by our welcome table at the entryway of the church and uh, to make yourselves known to us. Uh, again, welcome also to our online worshipers as well. Uh, great to be with everyone on this Sunday. This Sunday is always, for me, a special fun day uh, because uh, we have our parish picnic hosted by the brothers, and for me it marks the return of the fall programming year as we get ready for a new Sunday school year. Uh, so the brothers are going to have hot dogs and hamburgers, and there's potato chips and sort of fun uh, picnic food. Uh, we have a water slide for the young children. Lots of fun. Hope everyone can come on over. Uh, to enjoy the, the free lunch and to enjoy the fellowship and fun on this uh, parish picnic Sunday. Uh, just a few words also about Sunday school. Uh, if your children haven't been registered, there's a registration table today to get them all registered. Uh, next Sunday, it'll be a meet and greet the teachers Sunday. Looking forward to that getting started. Confirmation class gets started as well. Um, so prayers for all our Sunday school teachers and children uh, as we get ready uh, for the new year. Uh, vestry meets tomorrow for their monthly meeting, so prayers for our vestry and their good work of leadership and servanthood to the parish. This Friday, we have the last of our summer series events. Uh, we're calling it Piano and Poetry, hosted at the home of Tom and uh, Cassandra Hancock. I think we have one or two slots left um, so if you want to be part of that, call the church office tomorrow or email us and we'll make sure that uh, you get in. Uh, and I think those were my announcements today. Blessings, birthday blessings, anniversary blessings. Who's celebrating a birthday or an anniversary? Liz, it's got a birthday. Nick, Ian, it's your birthday today, isn't it? No. What is it, two days? Three days, okay. And you're coming up to support your, your brother, right? I thought so. <laughs> Antoinette's got a birthday. Sophia's got a birthday. Isn't this great? Okay, good group. Let us pray. Good and gracious Lord, we give you thanks and praise for those moments and times in our lives where we are so mindful and so grateful for your abiding care. Bless Antoinette, Liz, Ian, Nick, and Sophia uh, as they celebrate birthdays this week. Keep them rooted, grounded, growing, thriving in your life and love. And may God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit bless, preserve, and keep you. May our Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you peace this day, this year, and always. Amen. God bless you all. Happy birthday. Yay. <laughs>
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, Bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the peace. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Christ, who is human and divine, who is of heaven and also of earth, lift up your hearts and lives to God. May Christ make you faithful and strong to do his will, that you may reign with him in glory. May Christ's holy, healing, enabling spirit be with you every step of the way and be your guide as your road changes and turns. May the spirit of truth lead you into all truth. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, within you, and remain with you always. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.